QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Bill for hourly services of staff and set up items and enter billable time. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice Problem. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize the homepage to the gray area. Go into the view drop down, noting we have the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Reports drop down, company and financial. Let's go to the profit and loss standard. Change the range from 01023 to 12. 31 to 3 customizing it fonts and numbers changing the font bringing it up to 14 okay yes and okay once again with the reports drop down company financial this time the balance sheet let's customize it and then range and changing 010123 to 123 fonts and the numbers por favor 14 okay yes please and okay so there we have the setup process that we do every time we're going to go back to the home page here within our revenue cycle we have primarily been thinking about selling guitars but now we want to think about more of a job cost kind of system one which might be found in a law firm bookkeeping firm cpa firm where we have partners and staff the staff needs to be entering their time and billing it for the work they're doing for particular clients. And then we're gonna take that time as the partners and bill our customers using an invoice created from the time that has been entered. You can use a similar process if uh, you're a construction company or something like that. However, it's often more complex because you don't just have the time that you're charging for the invoice, but also the materials that need to be tracked. In that case, we have more courses that get into more complex detail on those kinds of systems. So we're gonna imagine then, we're gonna be entering time here, not so much so that we can build the time with, I mean, not so much so that we can use the time to run payroll, I should say, but rather so that we can build the time. Notice if you have a job cost system, we might be paying these people as employees that are salaried employees even. We might not be paying them hourly or possibly they could even be contractors or something like that possibly. And that means that when we run payroll, we don't really need to know what their hours are to process payroll if they're salaried. Instead, what we're entering the time for is order in order to create the invoices. Now note, you could enter the time here using QuickBooks, but you don't have to. QuickBooks just has a nice link that if you enter the time this way, that it connects to the invoice using that billable connection quite nicely. You could just have them do it in Excel or some other software take that information to create your billable information. But the easier the link is, obviously the easier it would be. You can also look into other options for tracking the time and having your employees uh, tied to it. You can look into the turn on time tracking option here, but we're just gonna manually enter it in the enter time down below. Now, as I enter the time, there's a couple ways you might do this. Like if I have an employee that's entering the information into their time, and I said this was like Adam Hamilton or something, then they can create their item over here. They can create their item over here. This is the customer job that they would be working on. We saw this in the prior month. When you create the service item, which the service item will be used to then create the invoice that we'll bill the client with, we can either use whatever they worked on. So we could use like the hourly rate or something like that, or we can set up a different billable item that will be charging out the time that has been worked. So we can basically bill out in other words by what they did 
or we can bail out by the person that did the work. So we might say that certain people we're going to put on jobs that are going to be higher level jobs and we're going to have a higher billable rate for those people's time. That's the method we're going to use here. And we're going to imagine that they that they have guitar lessons. So guitar lessons is how we're going to mirror this process. We have people that are doing guitar lessons. They're going to enter their time who they did the guitar lessons for. And then we're going to bill out that time. So I'm going to go up to the lists up top and look at the item list. Let's set up a couple items. I'm going to hit the item drop down or rise up and say new item. And I'm going to make it a service item. And I'm going to say this is Adam guitar lessons. So I'm going to create a new item called Adam guitar lessons. And I'm just going to copy that here and put that here and say that that was for, let's say we charge $75 for the guitar lessons. I'm just gonna keep it into the service account here. So I might make another account called guitar lessons, guitar lesson income, or possibly I just keep it in the service revenue and allow that, that separate subcategory to be broken out when we run sub ledger uh, type of reports rather than on the income statement, having another line item that's kind of up to you and how much detail you want on the income statement. So let's do another one. I'm gonna say item drop down or rise up and say new and i'm going to call it a service item and this is going to be erica guitar lessons and then i'll copy that i'll copy that and put it down here and she's going to and she's going to charge or we are going to charge on her behalf for her time 115 this is what this is not what we're paying her this is what we're billing her time out for notice it should be non-taxable I think I have to change the last one and I'm gonna put this in a service item, meaning we're not charging sales tax because it's a service item. Okay, let's fix Adams because I think I made, didn't change his to non-taxable. I'm gonna edit the item, say it should be non-tax and say, okay, so there we have that. So now let's enter his time in. So I'm gonna to go to the home page. I'm gonna enter the time, not so much so I can pay the employees but so I can use it to then create invoices. So I'm gonna hit the drop down. I'm gonna use the weekly timesheet because I think that's the easiest one to do. I'm gonna say this is Adam Hamilton and I'm gonna set the date to the last week in February. So I'm gonna do it for the, the week, the last week in uh, February. So it's gonna go through Sunday here. So we'll go through up through the 19th, we'll say for the for so it's February 13th through the 19th. All right, so then we have the customer, I'm just going to make a generic customer, we set up customer one before. So we're going to take this to customer one. And I'm going to call it Adam guitar lessons, that's going to be the item that's going to help us to bill out. So that's what's going to be tying to the invoice. And then it's going to be a payroll item. Now he's salaried. So if I pull this over to his payroll, then it would pull over the salaried item but I'm not really consider, really focused on the payroll. The notes here, I'm gonna say Monday, he did two hours, Wednesday, two hour lessons. That's four hours total, and it's gonna be billable, meaning we're gonna make an invoice from it. And then I've got customer two, that I'm gonna say this is, once again, Adam's guitar lessons. So notice that I'm not putting the item in here by what they did, guitar lessons. I'm putting it in here driven by, I made the item, for Adam, I'm billing Adam's time out rather than what Adam did, right? Because I'm gonna say he has a higher rate for his guitar lessons possibly, or lesser rate, whatever, than whoever else has the guitar lessons. Okay, so this is gonna be two hours here and two hours on Thursday for a total of four hours that will be billed out. That's a total of eight hours that we are gonna be billing out for the guitar lessons. Note, as you enter the data into the system, this would be the same if you have Excel worksheets that you're doing this in. You have to have, you could, if you only had one thing that you worked on all week, one line that you could put all of your time in. However, uh, of course, if you had two people, actually, I wanna make this one a different customer. Let's make this customer two. Customer two, tab. I'm gonna do a quick add. So because we have two, two customers, that's gonna require us to use two lines. The same would be the case if we had uh, different jobs that we worked on. We couldn't, we couldn't use the same line even if we had the same customer if we worked on uh, different jobs. So we're gonna keep that. That's gonna be the eight hours. Let's say save and new. I'm gonna say save and new instead of save and close. I'll do the same thing for Erica Smith. 
So we'll t take her stuff here and we're gonna say this is gonna be, I'm just gonna make generic customers. Customer three this time, tab, quick add. And I'm gonna type in Erica's time, Erica's guitar lessons. And she's gonna do on Monday and Wednesday as well. It's billable. And then I'll just do, I'm mirroring that for customer four, adding a new customer, quick add. Erica time is the item. We're gonna put this on Thursday or Tuesday and Thursday. So those are billable items. So this will not record any financial transaction. It just inserts the time, which could then be used to create the, the, um, the time payroll, but that's not what we're focused in on. We're gonna use it to create then saving and closing the invoice. So in a future presentation, we'll go up to the invoice then and we'll start to bill out these customers. So now we're gonna say, if I was the partner now, or I'm the owner, I'm gonna say, okay, our employee worked on this particular customer. You can see it has billable items to be pulling in. We can pull, pull in those billable items and then, and then bill them out. So if you had a job cost system such as this, a partnership kind of set up in a, in a bookkeeping firm or law firm or something like that, typically the people will have to enter the time in some way, shape or form and then you're gonna bill out every week, every two weeks, every month or something like that based on the time that has been recorded into the system. So we'll go through more of this, we'll bill some of this out in future presentations, no change to the financial statements as of yet.